In this video, we're going to learn about loci and construction. So I'm going to try and cover this topic in as much detail as possible. So let's let's get straight to it. So essentially, there are just four things that uh, you should that that we're going to learn how to construct in this topic. One of them is a circle. I'm sure all, most of you already know how to make a circle. It's a, it's the easiest shape to make. The other is a perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular bisector. The third is the angle bisector. We're going to learn how to make an angle bisector. And we're going to learn how to make a pair of parallel lines. Now, before I start, I should mention that we're going to need a construction we're going to need construction tools for this topic and by that I mean a geometry box uh, namely you're going to need a compass a pencil scale protractor and uh, of course an eraser and a sharpener okay so this tells us what we're going to learn or, and what we're going to construct but the more important question is that uh, how do we know what to make okay so that's that's a question that we're going to answer so we're going to talk about a circle first we're going to we're going to study what a circle is and then we're going to figure out when do we have to make a circle and how do we decide reading the question that uh, what we have to construct a circle so what's important to note here is that the topic that we're doing is loci and simple construction right so loci is basically plural of the word locus okay now locus basically is a set of points that satisfy a given condition okay so we're going to be using this term a lot so it's better to get ourselves familiar with it the, right now the sooner the better so locus is basically a set of points that satisfy a given condition and what is that condition obviously that is that is something that's going to be mentioned in the question so let's let's study a circle first and see and then we'll decide when do we make a circle so if you have a circle and before you make a circle what what you need to know is the radius okay so you're going to have a center point let's let's call that o and you're going to have a radius. These are the two things you need to know in order to make a circle. So let's say the radius of the circle is 4 centimeter. Now what's important is that any point lying on the circumference of the circle, right? Any point lying on the circumference of the circle is going to have radius, is going to have a distance of 4 centimeters from the center, okay? I can mark whatever point I want, okay? And the distance from the center is the same. Or in other words, the distance from the center is equidistant, or the distance from the center is always 4 centimeters. So if the question says that construct locus of a point P that is let's say four centimeters from the center for four centimeters from the point O okay if the question tells you to construct a locus of a point P that's four centimeter from the point O so what we're going to do is we're going to make a circle and four centimeter is going to be a radius and O is going to be our center point so what's going to happen is that once we have, once we have done that we can see that all the points lying on the circumference are going to be 4 centimeters from o now there will come a point where the question is going to sh ask you to shade and identify a certain region that we'll cover uh, later right now we're just going to learn what to construct and when to construct it so the next the next locus is a perpendicular bisector now this term is pretty self-explanatory and uh, by the way I have a video on how to construct a perpendicular bisector if you want to learn that I should I, I, I if, if you want to learn how to construct a perpendicular bisector I strongly suggest that you watch that video so let's break this term down uh, into two terms the first term is perpendicular which means that it's making a 90 degree angle and the second term is bisector which means cutting in half so that's what that's what basically a perpendicular bisector does so if you have two points a and b and let's say i make uh, let's say i join them with an with a, with a straight line so there you go this is line ab so the perpendicular bisector of ab is going to look something like this okay this is what it's going to look like so what it's going to do is it's going to cut this line into half and it's going to pass at an angle of 90 degree. Now what's really important is that every point lying on the perpendicular bisector, irrespective of where it is, is going to be equidistant, which means equal distance 
from A as well as B. So if you have a point, let, let's call this X. So the distance of X from A is going to be the same as its distance from B. And let's say you take another point P. The distance of point P is going to be the same from A is going to be the same as the distance from B. So when do we make a perpendicular bisector? Let's talk about that. So a perpendicular bisector is drawn when the question tells us to construct a locus of a point P equidistant equidistant from A and B. So whenever you have to draw, let's go back a little, whenever you have to draw a locus from one point, right, like we did uh, previously, what you make is you make a circle. And whenever you have to draw a locus from two points, so you can see that A and B are two points, right? What you do then is you make a perpendicular bisector. So whenever you have to draw a locus from two points, what you do is you make a perpendicular bisector. Now again, if you want to learn how to make a perpendicular bisector, I strongly suggest that you watch a video where I've taught how to make a perpendicular bisector. So let's move on and talk about the next locus, which is angle bisector. Now again, this term is also quite self-explanatory. It's a line that bisects an angle. Angle bisector. We all know what an angle is. An angle is formed when two lines meet and bisect means again cutting in half. So let's see what an angle bisector looks like. Uh, I don't have a video on how to construct an angle bisector. I will explain it in this video. So suppose this is A, oops sorry. Suppose this is A, B and C. So hypothetically speaking, let's say angle ABC is 60 degrees. Okay, I haven't measured it, but let's say it is 60 degrees. So what an angle bisector will do is it is going to bisect this angle. That means it's going to be uh, angle bisector is going to be a line that's going to divide these angles into two and both of them are going to be 30, 30. So 30 on both sides. Now what's important about an angle bisector is that any point lying on the angle bisector, let me switch to a different color. Yeah any point lying on the angle bisector, the perpendicular distance of it is going to be the same from both the lines. So all the points lying on the perpendicular bisector will be equidistant from the two lines. So what does that tell us? That tells us that when to, uh, that tells us when to make a perpendicular bisector. So we make a perpendicular bisector when the question tells us to construct locus of a point P Locus of a point P equidistant from AB and BC. So what are AB and BC? We can see that there are two lines. So whenever you have to draw a locus from two of two lines, what you do is you make an angle bisector, right? That's just an easy way to remember it. Now again, we're going to come across questions where the question is going to tell us to shade and identify the region that is closer to a certain line as compared to the other. So that's the shading part that we're going to learn later once we have learned uh, all, the, all the things that we need to construct. Okay, so now let's learn how to construct an angle bisector for which I use, I use an app. It's called Ruler and Compass. I'd suggest that if you if you download this app, this really f it's it, it makes this topic really fun. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to make an angle of uh, 60 degrees. Okay, so here you go. I'm going to put my protractor here. I'm going to measure 60 degrees. So this right here is 60 degrees. Okay, I'm going to make a line, and then I'm going to make another line of random length. Okay. So this angle you can see is 60 degrees. Now my job is to make a line that bisects it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my compass. Okay, I'm going to place my compass here where the two lines are meeting. Okay, you can open, you can have your compass of whatever length you want, right? That doesn't matter. In a perpendicular bisector, yes, we open it more than half, but here it really doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm just going to open it to a random length of whatever. Like I said, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm going to draw an arc such that it cuts both the lines. Okay, then I'm going to place my compass at where the arc is cutting one of the two lines okay and i'm going to make another arc directly in front of the previous one okay then the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to place it where it's cutting the other line the arc is cutting the other line i'm going to make an arc directly in front of the 
previous one of the first one okay now I should have a point where the two arcs are intersecting in case you don't I suggest you extend one of these two one of the two arcs and you will have a point where the two arcs are intersecting now my job is what my job is to take the point where the two lines are meeting the common point and join them with the help of a straight line now what happens then let's see we can see that what this line has done is that it has bisected this angle and you can see that the angle which was uh, 60 degrees has now been cut into two and you can see let me show you yeah let me show you that this angle is you can see is 30 degrees so this is how you make an angle bisector let's let's have a quick recap of it whoops so once you have your angle what do you do then you make an arc such that it cuts both the lines and then what do you do you make another arc with uh, your compass this time at the point where the arc is cutting one of the two lines and then repeat the process from the other point and then you join them with the help of a straight line so that is how you make an angle bisector now now let's talk about the fourth and the final locus and that is parallel lines okay now we all know that parallel lines never meet and the reason for that is very simple and that is because they, the distance between them remains the same okay so the question is when do you construct a pair of parallel lines and later on we're gonna answer how do we construct a parallel line so basically if, if you look at parallel lines we can see that let's let's say here's a b and here's uh, x y so if you notice that the distance between these two lines the perpendicular distance remember whenever the term distance is used it is automatically understood as perpendicular distance so the perpendicular distance between the two lines will always remain the same suppose line x y is three centimeters from a b that means uh, every point on line x y will have a perpendicular distance of three centimeter from the line a b so that tells us that a per that a parallel line is made when you're asked to construct a locus of a point p three centimeters from AB okay so basically you do this when you're asked to construct a locus of a point which is at a fixed distance from one line you can see here that AB is one line so whenever you're asked to construct a locus one from one line what you do is you make a pair of parallel lines okay now let's learn how to make a parallel line so again we're gonna go back to our app let's clear everything first so I'm just going to draw a, ra a line of random length, okay, for five centimeter. Now suppose I need to construct a locus of a point P that's three centimeters from this line. Uh, let's call this AB, okay. So what I'm going to do is the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fix my fix a pencil in my compass and I'm going to open it up to three centimeters. I'm going to start from the point A, okay. I'm going to make an arc, okay. So here you can see I've made an arc. I'm going to move my compass slightly towards the right. Okay, it doesn't matter how much you move it. What we what we should have is we should have three, four arcs, and the objective is to make a tangent line to all those arcs. So now we have enough arcs. Okay, so since you've done this above the line, we're going to do the same below the line because obviously below the line also we're going to have points that are going to be three centimeters from AB. Since sometimes it's going to be specified in the question. So in that case, you'll just have to make one straight line either above or below or perhaps on the right or left. But since here we're not specified, so we're doing both. So then you're going to pull out your scale. You're going to place it in such a manner that uh, the line that we draw turns out to be tangent to all these arcs. Okay, I'm going, to be, I'm going to try and be as neat as possible. So this looks... Yeah, this looks good. There you go. So all the points lying on this line are going to be three centimeters from AB and I'm going to make a line below it. There you go. So all the points lying on the line above or the line below are going to be at a fixed distance from the line AB and that fixed distance is going to be three centimeter. There you go. You can see that that fixed distance is three centimeter. Okay. Now, so let's have a quick summary of, uh, of all that we've learned. We can see that uh, if the question is, uh, has, is asking us to construct a locus from one fixed point, okay, what do we do from, if you have to construct a locus from one fixed point and uh, which is at a, at, a, at a fixed distance, we make a circle. 
right? So you have a fixed point here, and if you're asked to construct a locus around it, if you're asked to construct a locus that's equidistant from this fixed point, you make a circle. If the question has asked you to construct a locus that is at a fixed distance from two points, what you do then is you make a perpendicular bisector, perpendicular bisector, and I have a separate video on that. I've mentioned that before. So here's A. By the way, it's it's not even necessary. It's not necessary that A and B are going to be joined from with the help of a straight line. They may be or they may be not. That doesn't matter. So our perpendicular bisector is going to be a line. It looks like this. And in fact, let's just draw a straight line here. And all the points on this line, on the perpendicular bisector, are going to be equidistant from the two points that are A and B in this case. So so here's number one, here's number two. Then the third is when you're asked to construct a locus of a point P that's equidistant from two lines, what you do then is you make an angle bisector. We've covered how to make an angle bisector in this video. All right, let me just give you a quick rough sketch of it. There we go. And the angle bisector is going to look like this. And when you're asked to construct a locus of a point P that's equidistant from one line, what do you do then? You make a parallel line. Okay, that can be either above the line or it can be either, or it can be below the line. Right? Let me just use a different color for it. So it can be like this, or perhaps like this. So there you go. So that was a quick uh, you can say. Uh, actually, not a quick, I would say that was quite, uh, quite in detail. Uh, review of uh, low science simple construction. Okay, in the next video, we were going to learn the shading part, which is perhaps the most important part. And those are the kind of questions that you're likely to find in past papers. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.